Day 184 of the Ukrainian War Map, also known as Russia's denazification of Uk oh sorry, bit of propaganda got me there. Also known as Russia's devastating invasion of Ukraine. Jazzy here, and today is just another quick update as I take a simplified and down-to-earth approach to the happenings on the ground in Ukraine. And as always, I like to start off with the Russian military losses. Now, these are just estimates. However, over the last month, multiple analysts have indicated that Russia is now running very low on troops and resorting to extreme measures to replenish their ranks by recruiting residents from occupied territories, like detaining teenagers of Luhansk Oblast families then releasing them in exchange for sending another family member to the front line or drafting 400 plus coal miners from occupied regions or waiting on young fathers outside kindergartens to forcibly mobilize them to the front line or most recently or most notably putin signs a decree to expand russia's armed forces to 2 million now, the decree increases the armed forces by about 137,000 personnel. So although Russia can't fully mobilize all of their countrywide troops for this uh, special military operation, this will probably give them another 10 to 20% boost on their existing troop forces, or should I say their depleted Russian troop forces. But back to the figures, uh, we'll have a look here. So uh, military personnel lost in action. An additional, uh, there's actually about, six, big day actually, 600 or so, although I can't really see it here. Let's go backwards a moment. 850 to 250, so an extra 500. Usually it's about 150 a day. There was a lot of things happening though on the map and I'll show you some of those shortly. But 46, 250 there and uh, intended for invasion. Uh, this figure I'm not actually sure is uh, accurate, you know, I'll concede that. It should be about 250,000 normally, and with an extra 10 to 20% boost, Russia will get a few more soldiers sprinkled across the front line there. I don't think it's gonna help them out too much. And uh, I like to take a quick peek at the military hardware losses as well. So armored combat vehicles, an additional six. Uh, tanks are whopping seven. Three artillery and no boats, floats, or choppers. That's just the same there. So let's move across to the map and uh, have a look. We'll start in the Kiev uh, area or district where explosions were reported in Buka, the Buka district, a little bit north of Kiev there. Although this explosion was actually not so bad. It was due to a, a controlled detonation of unexploded ammunition. So it's good to see that they're clearing those up. And uh, moving across to the map now, generally I'll say Russia continues to hammer civilian targets, oddly, in Ukraine. So we go to Sumy, for instance. The Sumy Oblast governor said houses, farms, and uh, even haystacks were damaged due to Russian strikes using incendiary, incendiary munitions. So incendiary munitions are basically such that they contain a chemical explosive agent that ignites after they hit a target, sometimes causing fires, of which they're actually illegal when used on a civilian population due to the toxicity of the chemical compounds typically used there and the sheer overkill violent nature of the rounds there as well. We move across to Kharkiv, uh, or really the wider oblast here. So there it is around that location there. But here's a video of a turretless Russian tank completely destroyed by the Ukrainian army in the vicinity of Izium from just earlier today. So yeah, that is, uh, there it is, Izium right there. And uh, yeah, so it's good to see. It's probably one of those tanks that are in the, the combat losses that we saw there a moment ago. Uh, move across to the Donbass. Now, Russian forces, just zoom out for your context a bit better there, continue to shell hard along the Donbass with no real notable gains. It's clear one of Russia's, or really Putin's, biggest strategic objectives at the moment is to take the rest of the Donbass area. So this area here, and it... Uh, in order to claim some sort of real military victory uh, to their people. Now, we have a photo of uh, Arkadivka. So 
a known Russian base in Kadivka. In fact, I'll just pull it up on the map for you, do a bit of a search. That'll be faster than me trying to zoom in. And here we go, Luhansk Oblast right there. So, uh, yeah, known Russian base in Kadivka was destroyed in a missile strike. It's not the first time the Ukrainians have focused on this location either. So there appears to be some ammo depots there as well. Now, Slavyansk, not quite at the Donbass uh, front line as much as other locations, but damage to civilian houses uh, occurred as a result of Russian army shelling in this location. The explosions were so powerful that a piece of the curb flew into the air and damaged the balcony on the fifth floor from one of the reporter's advices there. And residents of the broken apartments say that there are no military installations in the area. And we'll go to the map and we'll actually take a real good look at any changes on the front line. There was only a, a small change uh, that Russia took on the front line in the northwest uh, area of the city of Donetsk. So right here. So if you go back and forth between the days, it's a bit of a gray area, literally, in fact, because having said that, it appears to be a, a combination of a gain and a loss of the Russian forces. Previously unconfirmed space is now back in Ukrainian hands, so somewhat of a stalemate in a way there as well. Now we'll move across to the uh, Dnipro Petrovsk region, or, or oblast there really. Russia has shelled several districts in this region overnight using Russian Grad and Urigan multiple rocket launchers. Uh, the Russian army shelled the city of uh, Kriviri as well. So if I just zoom in, and here it is over there. And further shelling at Nikopol too, not surprising given its location near the Russian controlled nuclear power plant area there. But what I want to do is show you something here is hopefully I'll just use the ruler not to actually measure it, but I'll show you the Dnipro Petrovsk Oblast. So I'll just do a bit of this and certainly take in my time there. My mouse battery is running out and make that connect. So this is actually the Dnipro Petrovsk Oblast. So by no means, well, really by no means on the front line. I mean, there is a little spot here in the Zaporizhia region and a spot here on the Kherson uh, North Bank uh, offensive of, of sorts, but it really is quite separate. So Russia is really, uh, in fact, even here, at uh, where I just mentioned Kree Viri right there. So even Russia was shooting a little bit there. Uh, there was actually a, a missile shot down by the Ukrainians, a Russian missile in Dnipro, the city of Dnipro. But uh, yeah, that's there's some of the two biggest cities there, uh, Dnipro and Kree Viri there. I just want to give you an idea. It's not quite the front line, but uh, it does get a lot of news in this district or, or oblast or province, or whatever you want to call it there. Now I'll just get rid of that and we'll move across to uh, Zaporizhia, uh, which is two thirds controlled by the Russian forces. Uh, if we zoom in a little bit, uh, we've got the Anahoda nuclear power plant, of course, there. Okay, so the nuclear power plant was temporarily disconnected from the power grid in the last 24 hours, which is believed to actually be an objective of Russia's. It appears to have then been reconnected, but the reactors are offline now. The Energy Council related to this plant sent out a tweet blaming Russia for this. And as a historical note, uh, this is the first time in history that the plant has ever been disconnected from the grid. Also, we have a photo of Russian armored personnel carriers and trucks just right next to, uh, just a number of meters away from Reactor 5, as you can see there of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Again, this is obviously a bit of a dick move on the Russian part. And if they stay there, which they probably will, those Russian forces will not get destroyed. I can all but bet that. They're clearly using the nuclear power plant as a shield cover for their safety and indeed a bit of blackmail too during time of war. There's many names for this. Feel free to post it in the comments. Uh, both trolls and non-trolls non alike are welcome. I welcome your opinion to see uh, what you might call this. 
Uh, let's see, we'll move across to Curson, so a bit of action here as well. Uh, explosions and fire were reported at the Antonivsky Bridge this morning at about 5 a.m. their local time. So we'll zoom in, and that is right there. Uh, Ukrainian forces hit the the, uh, the bridge near Kherson again. The Operational Command South, the Ukrainian Operational Command South, said that Russian forces are not currently trying to use or repair the bridge across the Dnipro River. They have actually uh, continued to make little uh, uh, pontoon bridges to, to supply their forces. Uh, so this is, uh, I've, I've seen some images, I'll see if I can get you an image uh, sooner or later in some videos or video. But uh, it's, I believe that the Ukrainian forces with their high miles or certain high precision artillery from just beyond the front line are waiting for those pontoons to be almost completely created, followed by just taking them out. So yeah, that's that there. And uh, speaking of which, Ukrainian forces destroy communications and logistics hubs at uh, Dudchani. So I'm going to have to uh, go up a little bit north there to find that Dudchani. Uh, I'm going to have to load that in because I do need to zoom in to find a specific spot. It is around here though. Let's see. Search enter. Oh, just missed it. So uh, yeah, the Ukrainian forces yeah destroyed a logistics hub there uh, in the Russian occupied north bank of the Kherson Oblast, as you can see there. So they seem to have got some uh, I guess uh, depots or logistics points there, and of course Ukrainians took it out. Now, moving across to some of the news, uh, President Biden spoke with the Ukrainian President Zelensky and Biden noted the following saying, I spoke with President Zelensky to congratulate Ukraine as it marks its Independence Day. I know it is a bittersweet anniversary, but I made it clear that the United States would continue to support Ukraine and its people as they fight to defend their sovereignty. Uh, moving across to uh, some information about <laughs> German Chancellor Scholz. So he visited a Ukrainian military training ground in Germany. And my deepest apologies here. Any Scholz newsworthy information piece, I just can't help but add the topless protest image where he seems to enjoy it a bit. Uh, not unhappy that they're protesting. I wonder why. In some further news, two Canadian Air Force uh, C-130s, Hercules, actually known as, these ones are super Hercules, uh, transportation vehicles, uh, military vehicles, will be assisting in the transport of military aid to Ukraine. And as you may have heard uh, them say before, uh, common military comment or line is that infantry wins battles, but logistics wins wars. And a bit of a funny uh, to round off with. So this one is making a bit of a light of or fun of Russia's less than useful air defense systems at military installations in the last two weeks in the Crimean Peninsula, of which many were taken out consistently. So we're talking depots, headquarters were hit, airfields, you name it, Ukrainian forces took it out. So a bit of a Funny little one there. So it's uh, talking about maybe military lack of uh, technological parity there. <laughs> You've got the the bows and arrows, or sorry, just the arrows <laughs> underneath the planes, for instance. Okay, so that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment, subscribe, hit that like button. Definitely hit the like button. Show those trolls who's who. And uh, yeah, I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.